Hi guys and welcome back to the Mighty Blues. My name is of course Cameron and welcome back today to another video. It is match day, you're Everton taking on Fulham at Craven Cottage later on this evening. We did do the game preview to that game yesterday. If you haven't checked that out, please, please go and do so. Really, really interesting chat about the importance of tonight's game. But in the meantime, I thought we'd sit down and do a little transfer update video. Now, obviously, there haven't been many of these over the course of this last month. And if you've been somebody that has been around the channel for a number of years now, you will know typically that the transfer window usually brings uh, numerous rumours, numerous reports, numerous potential incomings and outgoings, and therefore we usually sit down <clears throat> multiple times a week minimum, pardon me, and talk about the rumours and do videos like this where we address things and we talk about the potential of Everton bringing in a couple of new players or Everton losing a couple of players, etc, etc, etc. Obviously, this transfer window has been incredibly different to any of the others in, in, in recent years because there has been little to no wriggle room whatsoever for Everton to do any business. We know obviously over the course of the last two, three years or so, it's been very difficult for Everton to do business. You think back to that summer in which we only spent one and a half million pounds under Rafael Benitez and even all of the transfer windows that followed. Everton only really began doing business when they'd sold the player uh, in order to be able to fund said business, i.e. Richarlison or Anthony Gordon, for example. So this one is a little bit different because we were told going into this transfer window not to expect much, and we've been told numerous times throughout the course of this month that it will be very, very difficult for the club to strengthen in this window because of financial difficulties, and that means that it's absolutely no surprise that we sit here on the 30th of January, two days away from the transfer window closing. It closes on Thursday, the 1st of February, which, yes, makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Why it doesn't close on the 31st is beyond me, but anyway, that is beyond the point. Uh, we sit here on the 30th of January, and it looks like at this moment, Everton will not be making any additions to the squad. And judging by a couple of recent reports, it seems like Everton will not be losing any players from the squad. Either the latest reports coming from Le Equip has come directly from Leon's owner, John Textor, who has said we have submitted significant offers for both players, talking about Arnold Danjuma and um, I believe Leon are also interested inside Ben Rama of West Ham United. Uh, we have submitted significant offers for both players and we believe both would be happy to come to Leon, but their clubs have their their own priorities and Dan Juma's case is even more complicated. So obviously <clears throat> the Dan Juma rumours are about the only constant when it comes to transfer rumours and Everton Football Club over the course of this month. We haven't really been linked with bringing any players in. We've been linked with the odd one or two, but they've not been anything more than just uh, transfer rumour links in, in newspapers, etc. The only one that had any sort of meat on its bones was the Hannibal Mabry deal. And obviously Everton, you know, became interested far too late down the road in that situation and he's ended up going to Seville. Um, but the Dan Juma reports have been the only real <clears throat> sort of constants over this month. Um, it's obviously at times looked like he'd be moving away from the football club. And as the days have gone on and as the weeks have gone on and it's become more and more apparent that Everton are going to find it difficult to replace him or anyone in the squad for that matter because of our financial issues or because of the fact that we're only really going to be in a position to buy if somebody leaves the football club significantly and obviously with Arnold Tanjima being on loan that wouldn't be the case it seems like Everton are standing pretty firm with this deal which is absolutely what they should be doing because there's no way on this world that Everton can afford to allow players to leave the football club without necessary replacements walking through the door. It would be absolute madness for Everton to lose any more members of this squad, especially when you give you think about the injuries that we've currently got at the squad at the moment. <coughs> Pardon me. 
there's reports floating around social media today to suggest that there's even more injury news that we'll find out a little bit later on today. I don't want to talk too much about it because it is just rumours, but we all know Everton's squad is absolutely threadbare at the moment. And we all know that really and truly, we needed to improve on the squad in this window. We needed to bring players in. We needed to add depth to this squad because it just isn't strong enough. And we've seen that numerous times over the last few weeks or so. The performances on the pitch are showing that A, the manager is simply, you know, whether he's refusing to or whether he just doesn't believe he can, he won't make any big changes to the team uh, because obviously for whatever reason, maybe he just doesn't believe the players on the bench are good enough to come in and make an impact. But that means that players like, Jack Harrison, players like Dwight McNeil, players like Dominic Calvert-Lewin, players like uh, James Tarkowski, Jared Branthwaite, Amadou Onana, James Garner are all having to play every single week. And you can tell, you know, you only have to look at Everton's recent performances, the game against Luton, uh, which was a, a really, really poor performance. The game against Crystal Palace, which was a really poor performance. I know we beat them in the end, but the performance in itself was really off. The other game against Crystal Palace, Selhurst Park, not great. The Villa performance, not great. And that is all because the squad for me is is absolutely on its on its bare bones at the moment in terms of its fitness, in terms of its stamina, um, and ultimately <clears throat> in terms of its motivation. And it's, uh, it, it, you know, it's it's momentum. There just isn't much there at the moment. And as I said, in an ideal world, Everton would have been able to go out in this window and bring in two or three players and really improve on the squad and really improve on the team. But as we know, that isn't a possibility or certainly doesn't seem like a possibility at this stage. Um, and given we've only got 48 hours left of the window, it doesn't look like that's going to change. So keeping a hold of players like Arnold Juma, although he hasn't been brilliant for Everton this season, and although I appreciate and I understand that, um, you know, uh, in an ideal world, maybe we'd move him on and maybe we'd go and get somebody else in. Ultimately, we don't live in an ideal world. And that means that if we aren't able to replace him, then he stays at Everton Football Club because, A, he's a body and he's somebody that Everton can use and utilise. And, and although Sean Dice doesn't seem to be a particular fan of his at the moment because he's not getting a lot of game time, he's not really being involved, uh, maybe that's just because of what's going on in the transfer window. Maybe that's just because there's a bit of news at the moment floating around and the manager wants to keep everybody focused. The reality of the situation is, as I've said, Arnold Danjuma is somebody that, whilst he hasn't hugely impressed during his time at Everton Football Club, he can cause issues, he can get at Premier League defenders, he can create opportunities with it with with a bit of coaching and maybe a bit of confidence, his decision making can improve and he can be somebody that has an impact on this season. I'm not saying he has had an impact already and I'm not saying he's been excellent and we should do everything we can to keep him. But what I'm saying is if we are unable to replace him, then it makes absolutely no sense in my mind for him to be allowed to leave the football club. So, you know, the reports at the moment suggesting that Everton are, are standing strong and staying firm in their situation with Arnold Dan Juman, and I think that's absolutely the right thing for the club to do, and it's up to Dan Juman now to get his head down, work hard, and it's up to Sean Dyche. I think both people are responsible for this. Whenever we speak about Arnold Danjuma, it's always typically one or the other. It's always, well, he needs to get his head down and work hard and battle and, and, and try harder. Or it's, well, the manager needs to stop being stubborn and give him a go and, and, and give him a run out in the team. I think both things are correct. I think Danjuma probably does need to get his head down and work a little bit harder and give a little bit more. Um, maybe that's in training, maybe that's, you know, just in, 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 in general, because it's very clear the manager doesn't see something in him that he wants to see, you know, and he does see in all of the other players. Um, but the manager as well also needs to change his outlook on things. You know, we spoke yesterday about how the lack of substitutions and, and the lack of, uh, you know, giving players an opportunity on, on Saturday against Luton was really frustrating for me. There's no reason Jack Addison and Dwight McNeil should have been on the pitch for as long as they were when you've got Lewis Dobbins sitting there. Um, so the manager 
needs to be a little bit less stubborn and, and maybe look at Dan Juman and think, you know what, you're a part of this squad and, and this squad is absolutely threadbare at the moment, so you're going to get an opportunity and, and I think tonight would be a perfect example of that. But as it stands at the moment, it looks like Arnold Dan Juma will be remaining at Everton, of course. If anything changes, we will be discussing it and if it is to change, it's probably more likely to change in the last 48 hours of the transfer window than it has been for the last two, three weeks or so. So let's just hope that Everton can keep strong and let's hope that Everton can uh, stay resilient in their, um, <clears throat> you know, in their, what what they want. And, and ultimately, it seems at the moment like they want Dan Juma to stay and be a part of the squad. From an outgoing to a potential incoming, I say potential because it was a potential for about five minutes uh, and then it was completely dead in the water. Uh, according to Ed Aaron's uh, Juventus player Timothy Weyer has rejected a loan move to Everton. Um, yeah, not hugely surprising. This I think one of the biggest issues Everton have got in 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 transfer windows at the moment is convincing players to join the football club. Um, you know we can talk all day about money and funds and the way we structure deals and how much money we're going to be given to players, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but ultimately the situation the football club is in is something that will have a knock-on effect on players decisions uh, on whether or not they want to join Everton or whether or not they don't want to join Everton if a player is sat there with two offers on the table one being from Everton Football Club for 50 grand a week on loan and one being from I don't know let's say um, West Ham or Brentford or or somebody of the like for, for the exact same amount of money what team is said player likely to choose well it will probably be the one that is in Everton for, for for many reasons, one of them being the 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 um <coughs> the London life in this example, which is 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 definitely a pulling point for for players. But another will be the situation that Everton are in. Uh, the club is the furthest thing from stable at the moment, and and the furthest thing from stability. Um, in 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 terms of the fact that. We're, we're currently undergoing a change of ownership of which we don't know whether or not it will be approved and if it isn't approved we don't know where we go from there because it seems like the current owner is completely checked out we've got no consistent and permanent members of a board uh, and obviously you know the financial issues going on at the football club at the moment that is having a direct impact on what is happening on the pitch because of the points deductions etc etc it just as a football club in disarray at the moment, and that's coming from one of its biggest supporters and somebody that has dedicated his life to this football club, it's fact. We are absolutely in disarray at the moment, and any potential player wanting to come into Everton Football Club will look, I think, and think, hmm, is it really worth my time going there? Am I going to be able to go there and, and change things? Am I going to be able to go there and have a huge positive impact? And that, for me, is a huge risk for the player to take and I know people will say, oh, well, you know, players don't care about that if there's enough money on the table. Well, Everton really haven't got enough money on the table at the moment, have we? So maybe that does come into players' thinking, and, and if it does, <clears throat> then players, you know, currently playing at Juventus and probably having a nice, cushy life and, 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 and you know, enjoying his football, probably look and think, you know what, I'm not quite sure on that one. So that didn't surprise me whatsoever. What? It does show is that the football club are in the market over the last 48 hours of this transfer window and the football club are willing to, you know, um, try and bring somebody in. As I've said a couple of times, I don't think we will because I just think it, it seems too difficult of a situation, but we may do, <coughs> pardon me, and it's positive to see that the club are trying and it's positive to see that the club are at least attempting to improve the squad as opposed to the stance in which we've seen before from Everton of, oh, well, we tried, but, you know, we, 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 we give up with a week to go because nobody wanted to come or we didn't have the funds, etc., etc. For me, Kevin Thelwell should be in that, you know, in that office at Finch Farm until midnight on Thursday trying to make deals happen. If we don't make any deals happen, then it is what it is. We know the financial situation the club are in. We know the position the club are in, the lack of stability. It probably is difficult to win players, you know, to, to bring players into the football club. That's fine. I understand that. But what I don't want is this 
everybody at Finch Farm has gone home by five o'clock on Thursday and everybody's just accepted that nothing's going to happen. No, we're not in that position. We need to be there until that deadline closes. And if we haven't brought anybody in, then, you know, we didn't expect to and it is what it is. But if we have, then that ultimately is an added bonus. But just because we'll struggle to get players in... um financially we're in a difficult position and even loan deals are difficult to do even even all of those things considered there's still every reason for 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 those people in charge of recruitment to be knocking on doors until midnight asking if we can you know bring players into the football club because who knows who knows you might get you, you know you might go to Juventus on Thursday night with a couple of hours to go and Timothy Weyer might say do you know what actually yeah go on out I fancy the challenge I'm not saying he will and I'm not saying that'll happen but I'm just saying using as an example of why players in the final couple of hours of a transfer window when they know they're not going to get any other move might think do you know what yeah I'll give that a go so yeah, it'll be difficult, but it, it it didn't surprise me that one whatsoever, and and I don't think Everton will will go back in for, will go back in for him either, if we ever did in the first place. You know these rumours are are always um taken with a, a huge pinch of salt, a huge pinch of salt. Uh, on to another then, according to Pete O'Rourke, of course, who is a transfer correspondent for Footy Insider. He has reported Everton are monitoring side Ben Rama's situation at West Ham late into the transfer window. <clears throat> As I've just said, a couple of teams monitoring side Ben Rama's situation at West Ham. I believe the Leon situation was for them to bring him in on a permanent deal as opposed to a loan deal. Um, this is one that I see a little bit more realistic than players like Timothy Weyer and a couple of other names we've been linked with. TalkSport also reported that yesterday that Everton is showing an interest in side Ben Rama of West Ham United. Um, I'd <clears throat> absolutely take him at Everton Football Club. I'd absolutely take him all day. Has he been fantastic for West Ham United? No. Has he been as good as what they may have expected when he walked through the door? Probably not. I think he's probably had some issues there. Don't think he's quite ever settled there. Don't think he's quite ever been a settled member of the team, of the squad. I think he might have had a couple of injuries as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it just hasn't worked out the way he would have wanted. He still had a lot of game time. He's still been involved. He's still, you know, played a a, a huge part in, in moments for West Ham United over the last couple of years. And obviously, uh, ultimately, he is a, a, a Europa Conference League winner with them. Uh, so it hasn't been a complete disaster, but they probably would have expected a little bit more from him when he was brought through the door. He's definitely a talented player. He's definitely a player with quality. He's definitely a player with ability, and he's definitely a player who can be a match winner um, and who can produce a moment of magic and a moment of quality at a time when you most need it. And I, as I said, I would absolutely have him at Everton Football Club. Would I want Everton to pay a considerable amount of money for him? No, but Everton won't be paying a considerable amount of money for him anyway because we can't afford that. However, as I said, reports are suggesting at the moment that Everton are interested in a loan deal. Uh, I'm not quite sure how feasible that is if you've got other clubs willing to buy him. I'm sure West Ham would probably rather sell him than loan him out given the current situation with the profit and sustainability rules at the moment. It's no, uh, no shock to read that a number of football clubs are struggling to do any business because they're flirting with the line. Uh, and, you know, obviously they've seen clubs like Everton and Nottingham Forest punished for going over that line. So maybe they'd prefer a sale than a loan. But if Everton could get this deal done... I, I'd be all over it because I think he'd be a good addition. Uh, and ultimately, you know, whilst he's not the greatest player in the world or the most consistent player in the world, he's somebody that could potentially be a match winner for us and I could potentially show up in a, in a big moment and um and and win us an important game of football. Which is which you know as 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 many players like that as we can get, we should absolutely be trying to get um. Because we're not in a position to be uh, to be <clears throat> turning a blind eye at those types of players, uh, according to Pedro um, Sepulveda. 
that's a difficult name to pronounce, isn't it? Pedro Sepulveda. Uh, Benfica have rejected a loan bid from Everton for midfielder Florentino Luis. Uh, don't know a lot about this player. Um, not quite sure why Everton would be pursuing him. But uh, again, what this shows is whilst this may have been a, a very quick sort of engagement between both clubs. Can we have him on loan? No, you can't. Similar with Timothy Weyer. Do you want to come to Everton? No, I don't. It shows that the club are actively going out and trying to make things happen. And like I said before, that is, for me, hugely important. You know, whilst we all appreciate it's difficult and whilst we all appreciate we may be sitting here on Thursday with the exact same squad that we entered the transfer window with, I get it and I appreciate that. However, that doesn't mean that we should just not try. That doesn't mean that we should just, you know, throw our hands in the air and say, oh, well, we give up. You know, you don't want to come to us, so we give up and we're not bothered. No, absolutely not. As difficult as this is and as tough as it will be to improve, we should be trying to improve, as I said before, until the final seconds of this transfer window because we are in a position... Uh, we aren't in a position and we aren't in a position in terms of the squad depth to just say at seven o'clock, well, we'll just give up because nobody wants to come. No, we're not in that position. That is worse than, you know, not bringing anybody in is what it is. We didn't have any expectations going into this transfer window. We were told to not have any expectations and I don't think any Evertonian is sat here thinking we're going to get two or three in before, you know, Thursday night. It's not going to happen. However, <clears throat> you know, we could walk out of the transfer window having signed nobody, and we could all sit here and say, well, do you know what? We expected that. It is what it is. But if we find out that the club stopped trying to sign players from, I don't know, let's say 2, 3 o'clock on Thursday afternoon, then I think it becomes a little bit frustrating, and it becomes a little bit negligent, and it's almost like, well, okay, we know things were going to be difficult and we were going to struggle, but that doesn't mean that you just don't try. And you give up and you just think, whatever, forget it, we won't waste our time. No, there's deals to be made. As difficult as they may be, there's deals to be made. Of course there is. Um, and it's important that Everton try and try and find those deals and, and, and try and make those deals. And, and I think even though we may have had a couple of players reject us at the moment, we're asking the question. And that, for me, is, is hugely, hugely important. Uh, on to another potential outgoing then, according to Mark Douglas, who, of course, is a reporter for iPaper. He has reported Ben Godfrey and Michael Keane are the only departures expected by Everton this transfer window after both being told they can leave the club. Leeds United are interested in Ben Godfrey. Um, yeah, there's been a couple of reports on Ben Godfrey of late. Uh, Pete O'Rourke also reported that Leeds United have made an official approach to Everton over a loan deal for Ben Godfrey. Sean Dice has greenlit the defender's exit as he looks to reduce the wage bill at the club. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised <clears throat> about this one. I'll be honest, I wouldn't be surprised about this one. Um, I don't think Everton will let him leave on loan. I'll be honest, I know the manager has said that he's, he, or the report suggests that the manager has greenlit the situation uh, in order to reduce the, the wage cost of the football club, and, and that would make sense, and if, if that is the case, it, it would be absolutely no surprise whatsoever. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, I, I, I'm just not sure the club would allow anybody to leave at the moment if we weren't getting a financial benefit from it. Now, I know you could say, well, you will be getting a financial benefit from it because you will have to pay the wages, but not having to pay the wages doesn't mean that we can go and replace Ben Goffrey. Um, and whether he should or shouldn't be, and whether we like it or not, Ben Godfrey is, is one of Everton's best four centre-halves. He's one of Everton's only four centre-halves. Uh, at the moment, and, and, and to leave us with only three, meaning that if one of Branthwaite and Tarkowski pick up an injury or a suspension, we're having to rely on Michael Keane, I'm not quite sure that's the most sensible decision in the world. If we get if we get a bid, you know, eight, nine, ten million quid, then yeah, whatever, fine, it makes sense, but without that bid, I'm not quite sure it's the most sensible thing to allow him to leave on loan. Um, Again, this is one that I think is more likely to progress over the next 72 or sorry, 48 hours or so. 
I think we're more likely to see a, a, an update in the next 48 hours than we have been over the last couple of weeks or so because it it, it it sort of reminds me or strikes me as the type of situation where Ben might be looking at this on Wednesday, Thursday night thinking, do you know what? I want to play football here, and, and, and if I'm not going to play here, then I want to go and play elsewhere. Um, so we'll wait and see how this one progresses. For me, for me, loan deals just don't incest me whatsoever. They don't incest me whatsoever because whilst, okay, we're going to save money in wages, we're only going to save that money in wages until the summer. And yes, that might be a couple of million quid that we save up, and that might be incredibly helpful. But I think in the long run, to weaken our squad for that, I'm not quite sure it's worth it. If we get a bid, then fine. You know, we, we, we take the risk that we may not be able to replace him, but at least we've got that money there that goes to running the football club. But low moves, I think it would be a bit silly. In my opinion, I think it would be a bit silly. Uh, according to Team Talk, Everton and Luton Town are interested in signing Ajax striker Tuba Akpom on loan until the end of the season. Former Arsenal, I believe, uh, played in the Premier League before. However, not necessarily impressed whilst being there. Um, yeah, again, you know, players Everton are being linked with. Tuba Akpom. Not being great, I don't think, since his, uh, since joining Ajax. Um, again, it's another report of a loan move, which makes sense because I'm seeing some, some reports of Everton bidding £30, £40 million pound for players. That just isn't correct because, as we all know, Everton haven't got £30, £40 million pounds to be bidding on players. So uh, any rumour that discusses a loan move and a loan deal, my ears are, are instantly picked up a little bit more because they're obviously more realistic to expect than Everton going and spending 30 million quid, which just isn't going to happen. Um, again, <clears throat> it just seems like Everton are knocking at the door of, of, of different clubs, different players, and asking the question, and I've got no issue with that whatsoever. Do I think Tuber Akpom will end up playing for Everton Football Club come the end of this month? No, I don't. He may do. He may do because this may be one of the ones where the club say, you know what, yeah, go on. And he might look at it and go, a chance to play in the Premier League again? Absolutely. Um, but again, it, it, it just doesn't it, it just doesn't seem um that it, it just doesn't seem that there's anything much more in a lot of these rumours other than just Everton are asking the question. And, you know, as I said, we'll we'll find out over the course of the next few days whether or not there, there is anything more in these. Tuber Akpom, so far this season, 13 appearances, 5 goals. So he's doing better than what I, I, I thought he was doing. Um, but yeah, would I have him at Everton? Probably. Probably, because at the moment, I, I think I would have anybody. Just anybody that can come in and strengthen the squad, anybody that could come in and offer us a different option, uh, I think would be great. But do I think he will end up at Everton? Probably not. But again, it shows we're knocking the door down. We're asking the question. Similarly, uh, Nizar Kinsella, of course, has reported that Everton and Fulham are interested in Brentford's Frank on Yeke. However, Brentford are not willing to loan the midfielder out to a Premier League rival. Premier League sides need to make a permanent offer. So there's not really much point talking about that one because, again, very, very unlikely to happen if they are demanding an offer, uh, a permanent offer, because Everton simply can't afford that. So unless they want 35 pence and a Fredo, then you know, that one isn't going to go any further than what it currently is. Uh, Le Equip reported a couple of days ago that Everton are demanding that they receive Leon defender Jake O'Brien as part of a deal that would see Arnold Danjuma's loan cancelled and join the French side. Um, I'm not quite sure how that makes much sense for Everton to uh, to bring in a defender to replace an attacker. I'm not quite sure where the logic in that is, but again, maybe that is is part of the um of the Ben Godfrey 
situation. Uh, the Daily Mail report, sorry, the Daily Mirror reported that Everton are uninterested in Leeds loan offer for Ben Goffrey. The defender is more likely to move abroad, and Everton would need a cash offer to part with him. Genoa, one of the foreign clubs interested. Genoa, of course, owned by Seven 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 Partners. So maybe that's why the Jake O'Brien stuff is sort of surfacing, is because Everton are expecting to 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 lose Ben Godfrey, and therefore they're needing to replace him. But we can't lose. Ben Godfrey and Arnold Danjuma and only replace Ben Godfrey because that would mean that we're without uh, an Arnold Danjuma replacement and that for me would would, would be absolutely silly. So again, <clears throat> this is one that is a few days old now and we've not heard anything about it since. So I'm not really expecting this one to go any further, but it's definitely a, a case in point. And then a couple of others just to finish. As I said, that the Daily Mirror report on Everton are not interested in selling Abdul like the core to Al Etifak. The Saudi side are keen on the midfielder, but Everton have not yet had an approach. I believe Abdul like the core is not wanting to leave the football club either, which is really, really positive news. And Everton and Wolves are battling to sign Pape again. Gay, the Marseille midfielder, before the close of the window. Gay is currently at AFCON with Senegal, but a deal could still happen with his contract expiring. That is according to Team Talk. Again, a lot of rushing around, rummaging around, and seeing who's available. It seems like at this current moment, uh, the latest coming 10 minutes ago from Jack Talbot, and that is Everton are looking to pursue a deal for Marseille winger Ismail Saar. Nottingham Forest and Villarreal are also interested, and Everton are looking for a loan with a deal with an option to buy. Marseille's asking price is £13 million. Ismail Saar, somebody Everton have been linked with numerous times over the last few years, of course, formerly of Watford. Um... Yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. <coughs> we'll keep an eye on it. Would I have him at Everton? <coughs> yes, probably. Um, he hasn't been incredibly consistent of late and he hasn't been particularly great. But again, he is another option. You know, he's a player with pace. He's a player who's played in the Premier League before and he's a player who would give us something a little bit different. And we're at this stage now in this window where if Everton can make a deal happen and bring somebody in that suits the football club, then make it happen. Because it, it almost feels like any addition to the squad would be a welcome one at the moment. Um, especially if it works financially for the football club. So we'll keep an eye on that. Just to summarise briefly, uh, it, it feels at the moment like Everton very much are knocking on doors and asking questions. And even though a lot of those answers may be no, go away. Uh, it, it's important and it's imperative that we don't stop asking those questions until, as I said, midnight on Thursday or whenever that deadline is. Because... You don't know. You may just get a yes to one of those questions. You may just get a, okay, no problem. And we may bring somebody in that scores a couple of really important goals and ends up keeping us in the league. So whilst it'll be difficult and whilst I appreciate it, I you know, ultimately we need to continue to try and improve this squad until the moment of the deadline. And, and that just is how it is for me. And whether that is Miles Saar, whether that's Chupo Akpom, you know, whoever that may be, we need to keep knocking the door down and, and asking those questions. So we'll see how this progresses. Anyway, there you go. We're going to leave it there. If you have enjoyed this one, please, please do leave a like. We will be back tonight with the instant match reaction and player ratings to the game against Fulham. So look out for those. Let us know your thoughts on all of the rumours and transfer news that we have discussed in this video. Really, really interested to hear what you all have to say. Big, big thank you all for watching. Leave a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. And we'll see you after.